Yo dudes, Jason here with a very late tutorial, apologies for the wait. Um, Alright, so today we'll be taking a look at the color tools that we have inside of Photoshop and Illustrator, um, as well as the gradient tools, which are quite powerful and useful pieces to sort of work our way around. Alright, so just recording this with the, uh, the VC side of um, files, so don't stress if you don't have these on the film side, uh, the knowledge is applicable across. All right, so the first thing we'll take a look at is just with our image over here, we're gonna take a look at um, selecting colors from within this image. All right, so remember that if I click or double click on these two little blocks over here, I can adjust my new color range, right? But if I hit I for my eyedropper tool, right? I can click and hover, right? And I can move myself around the screen and I can compare my current color with what I am currently hovering over and I can then make some color sort of selections from there, which is quite nice and useful. All right, and then if we need that specific color piece of information, once we've got it, we can always copy the hex code and make sure that we have it saved. All right, uh, then moving on to gradients. All right, so our gradient layers inside of Photoshop, uh, we hit G for the gradient tool itself. All right, it might sometimes be hidden underneath your paint bucket tool and we can then adjust in this little drop down over here the different kinds of gradients that we would like to apply all right now these gradients are sort of just the bog standard built into photoshop there is a wide variety of um, sort of free online swatches that can be accessed and downloaded so you really can build up a fantastic library uh, you'll see that to the right of these options i still have whether i want mine to be linear radial angular um, sort of like a star shape and then the <laughs> opposite of the other one um, yeah sort of like the letterbox effect all right and with my tool then selected on my empty layer I can just drag and drop and it creates a gradient layer for me all right which is pretty cool um, I can always readjust it all right, simply by clicking and dragging, and you'll see that the point of origin from my click does affect what it is that I'm looking at. Okay, so the reason why we can now see through this gradient is because of the blend mode of that layer. All right, so blend modes are essentially how we tell Photoshop to interact with the information, or any of the Adobe software rather, to interact with the information um, while it sort of overlaps with other information, I suppose you would say. So currently it's set to screen. All right, so if I click on this, you'll see I get a large variety of uh, sort of options here. And going over normal, seeing that my opacity is set to 40%, ramp that up to 100, and that's essentially what we'd be looking at. However, when we start then choosing these different blend modes, we can start creating some fairly interesting and hideous pieces of art, like that. <laughs> there we go. All right, cool. Um, we also then have access to our swatches panel. All right, so the swatches little icon looks like this. If you can't find it, it's under window and you can find it towards the bottom there, swatches. All right, so your swatches are also a library of sort of dedicated colors that you can then drag and drop. And you can drag and drop these onto a layer, which then essentially acts as like a clipping mask. Uh, well, I suppose clipping mask may be not necessarily the right, um, but yeah, uh, a layer mask. There we go. Okay, so we have that option as well. Um, not only that, right, so we've got our library with all of this fantastic. Um, however, the library itself, Adobe um, CC library, which you can again find down here, libraries. Um, this is also a fantastic tool simply because it allows you to save color swatches that you find online. All right, so what I have over here, adobecolor.com, all right, I've introduced it to you guys in class, but I can go from here, I can save an actual color theme, and I can then view that in my library if I need to. If I come back and I... So once I save it from Adobe Color, there we go. It's saved in my color themes, ready and waiting for me to use. All right, so we have those options there. Okay, and then again, just to introduce you to some more blend modes. Uh, so we've just got our color strip here, and when we hover over them, we'll get an idea of what it would look like below. 
right? And this then is another way that we can then go about generating our content. It's a great way to overlay pieces of information. Um, so yeah, consider it perhaps as something to use for one of your posters. Um, and then adjustment layers. Okay, let me just turn these off for now. Okay, so adjustment layers are essentially layers that we create that affect very specific pieces of information within a file. All right, so we currently have a color balance layer over here, a hue and saturation layer, and we then have a vibrance layer, which is ramping up the vibrance there, as we can see. All right, so just to go about creating a couple of new ones of these. Cool, so we've got our adjustments over here. Uh, we are going to go to Window and open up Adjustments. And we have our little panel here. This is the, the icon. All right. And we've got a couple of options here that we can create simply by clicking on them. Uh, we've got Brightness and Contrast, which when I create, you'll see I now move into the Properties panel. And I can then adjust the brightness and the stark contrast between these images. I can then jump back to Layers, and you'll see it's created a new layer for me. All right, next thing I can use is levels. This is a visual interpretation of the light range, I believe, on screen. Right, as you can see, we've got a gap between our dark and light zone here. And as I drag this further to the right, you'll notice that it's getting darker. It's losing excess information. Um, I'm not entirely sure of the science, so I don't want to lie to you. But it makes things darker, and it makes things, makes things lighter, and everything in between. Okay. And I can always go and turn these off if I don't like what I'm doing. Next up, we have curves. Curves are very cool. Um, this horizontal piece of information here shows that your information is just ramping up gradually. And we have the same visual information here um, that we had with our uh, levels. Yeah. So I can in sort of um, I can change this curve or this line rather by just clicking and dropping points on the little graph here. You'll see that the top section refers to my lights, and right? so I can drag those really down. Um, and here are my darks. All right. And if I'm not happy with the point, I can always just drag it off of the screen, and I can start again, which is pretty cool. All right. So this is currently set to adjusting the entire RGB color range. But if I click this drop down, I also have access to my reds information. So I could make this a lot more green. Um, I could then push the green a little further away and start making it purple, right? So I can just start playing around with these color values as they interact with one another. And I can almost essentially set it back to how it looked like in the first place. Let's go for something like that. Cool. Um, then we've got exposure. Um, I haven't worked in photography for quite a while, but again, it sort of just appears to work around with the brightness of your image. Um, Moving on, we have got our vibrance options, which allow us to push up the saturation or bring down the saturation of a file. And the vibrance then helping us to tinge that out a little bit so it's not so intense. Okay. Then we have our hue and saturation um, layer. Cool. So hue and saturation, uh, saturation as we've seen, then ramps up the intensity of the colors or brings it down again, right? So if we drag saturation to the to the negative 100 value, we essentially get a black and white shot. Uh, we then have our lightness and darkness values. Right? So again, sort of just adjusting the color tone or the, the brightness of the image. And then the hue actually sort of changes the color on screen. So you'll see that we can move this around and sort of generate a very interesting in the cover band. Um, yeah, there we go. Um, we've got color balance, which allows me to play around with the color values across the CMYK and the RGB spectrum. And we have got our black and white, which allows us to work with specific pieces of information. So all the information that's being currently read as red is only being adjusted, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and then photo filter, color, and color lookup. Not the one. Invert, always fun. Yeah, just absolutely terrifying cat singing people. Um, we've got posterize, which we will hope you'll never use, please. Um, and then we've got a gradient ramp as well. 
All right, and you'll see that as I create all of these, they have been applied one on top of each other. Okay, so that is that for our adjustment layers, essentially. Cool. So now we can move across into... All right, so I've got the file again provided by the visual comm side. Um, but yeah, we'll be able to sort of just take a look at what we've got. Um, so the first thing we can take a look at is we have, with our solid shapes here, what we would call our spot colors, um, solid blocks of color information, which we can then access on our color pickers, as we should remember from previous lessons. Um, I can then obviously change back and forth between my stroke and my fill color, and I can swap those around simply by clicking this little um, yeah, little drop, <laughs> drop arrow over here. Um, I can then also apply a gradient to the piece of information that I currently have. So you'll see that when I had the fill selected, I applied the gradient to that, and when I have the um, stroke selected, I can apply a separate gradient to that as well. All right, so I'll just turn it back onto solid. Let's turn it off for now. All right, so with this now having been sort of applied, you see that it's automatically been set to a linear gradient. I then have an option for radial, and I also have an option for a free form gradient, free form gradient, um, that I can then apply multiple points to. Um, there we go. So I can apply multiple points and I can adjust their colors and I can shift them around and sort of just have a more of a hands-on approach um, with the blend modes or the rather the, the gradation of the color uh, that we have on screen. All right, but going back over to the linear, this works the same for the radial. We have our color information here and it works the same in Photoshop. It's got the same sort of mark indicator in our bar, but we also have it on the shape itself, as long as we have the gradient tool selected, right, we then have access to this interaction. I can then redraw as necessary, I can re-angle, and I can bring my sort of starting points of information closer together or push them further apart. Um, I can also then sort of take more hands-on with the color control. Um, so rather than just working with black and white, I can double click on my color markers and it will open up a sort of color picking option for this as well. All right, so typically when we apply the gradient, it's automatically set to grayscale. So you'll see that once we've double clicked on the start, this dialog box opens over here. We can set this to RGB. We now have access to colors over here. I also have access to my swatches and I have access to a color picker as well. All right, so then, just because I've done that to the one sort of value doesn't mean that it gets applied to the other. So again, I have to double click, go over, set it to RGB, and then I can play around with that. Okay. Um, I also then have options to adjust the opacity of each individual piece. Right. So I've, if I wanted to adjust the opacity of my darkened area to drop down to 20% as it falls, uh, there we go, I've set it to 20%. I can do the opposite to my light one as well. And we sort of then have a lot more control over how the information is being gradiated, which is pretty cool, in my opinion. Um, okay, cool. Then the next thing that I can show you is that we have access to our swatches, and we also have access to our Adobe library from here as well. So the swatches panel here in Illustrator works fairly similar to Photoshop, except that rather than going through a sort of drop-down system, we have these slides here for all of our different um, color tones or uh, sort of pieces of color information that we might want or need. All right, so I can then apply these over there. I also, however, have access to this little option over here, my Adobe Color Themes panel. And sorry, we cannot find it. That's great. Um, I think I need to, to sort of log myself in. But yeah, this is essentially where it would open up Adobe Color for us again. Um, so just give it a look when you dive in here. Um, open up your Adobe Color Themes and <laughs> check it out. That's embarrassing. Sorry. Um, but yeah, we then have access to creating those as um, aids to help us out. 